Holosik from Sunbeam Elementary. And tomorrow is one of America's biggest holidays. That's right, the 4th of July, where America celebrates Independence Day. It is the symbolic anniversary of our nation's birth. We may celebrate with a picnic, with a cookout, a parade, fireworks, with our family, or maybe even our friends. Let's learn about other important symbols in the United States by listening to American Symbols. As you listen to the story, think about this question. Why are symbols important for our country? American Symbols, written by Anthony Curran. Many symbols. The United States has many symbols. A symbol is something that stands for something else. Symbols can be different things. American flag. The U.S. flag is an American symbol. It is red, white, and blue. The flag has 50 stars. Each star stands for one of the 50 states. Bald Eagle. The bald eagle is an American symbol. It is strong and beautiful. The bald eagle stands for how strong and beautiful the United States is. You can see the bald eagle on some coins. Statue of Liberty. The Statue of Liberty is an American symbol. It is on an island near New York City. The statue has welcomed many people to the United States. It stands for freedom and hope for a better life. The statue was a gift of friendship from France. Important ideas. The United States has many different symbols. They stand for ideas that are important to people in the United States. What other U.S. symbols can you think of? Wow, we learned a lot about different important symbols that the United States has. Well, today we're going to make an American flag. And we learned that the American flag had red and white stripes, a blue area, and 50 stars. One star to represent each state. And it's shaped like a rectangle. Then you will need an egg carton. I already cut my egg carton apart. If you have, you can get one that is, has 18 eggs to use. If not, you can put two of the dozen ones together to make your American flag. Put a carton. You will need blue, red, and white paint. Some paint brushes. 
blue. Some stars. I bought this package at Walmart. Or you can draw your own stars. Some ribbon that we're going to use to hang our American flag up. And scissors. But when you use scissors, make sure you have adult supervision because they're sharp. And a tray or a plate to put our paint on. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to paint the blue section. We're going to be painting the top left, the four tops blue. Where are my paints? Just start with a little bit and you can always get more. And we're just doing the top. And you're gonna paint the top four. There's the blue section. And one, two, three, four sections. Okay, now we're gonna move to the red. So I'm gonna get my red paint. Pour down the tray. do the red. We're going to do paint this outside, the inside, and then this outside. Do not paint the tops. The tops are going to be painted white. Okay, I'm going to start with this section. I'm going to get a different brush. And I'm just doing the side. Okay, looking good. So next, we're going to put the white on. different color brush to use. You only have one brush. Get some water and rinse it out and then you can um, use the same brush. Okay, so everything else left is going to be white. stars on. I need one, two, three, four stars. Make sure when you do it that it's dry. And the last thing I would do is I would attach a ribbon. So I've already cut my ribbon. It can be any kind of ribbon. I have this patriotic ribbon. I already made some slots and the edges to put my ribbon through. And there you go. And then you can hang it up.
Yeah, I hope you enjoyed our 4th of July activity. And I hope that you and your family have um, a fun time celebrating 4th of July. Hi, I'm Miss Valentine, an occupational therapist with Cleveland Metropolitan School District. And I have my two nephews here with me today that are gonna help with our activity. That is Colton Hi. and Wesley. Hi. And we are going to make two different healthy summertime snacks um, today. So the first one we're gonna make is a fruit kebab. And so this is a bunch of different types of fruit on one skewer. It's really good for if you're having like a party or a picnic, so you could just grab one skewer and you don't have to touch any of the other fruit. So it's good to help stay clean and keep your germs to yourself when you're at, outside at a party. Uh, since tomorrow is 4th of July, we're gonna try to make our skewers into matching a pattern. So we're gonna try to make them so they look like a flag, okay? So, to alternate, we're gonna use our bananas as our white, as our white stripes. Well, we can use the strawberries or the raspberries as our red stripes, and then the blueberries will be for the blue part of the flag. So before we get started, it's really important a couple of different things. We definitely want to wash our hands, and so I have some hand sanitizer because we washed our hands, but we want to make sure we sanitize again. Okay, so we're gonna put. All three of us are gonna put sanitizer on our hands to make sure our hands are nice and clean, okay? Also, the next, the other thing that we have to wash is the fruit. So you can put your fruit right under the sink and rinse it with the, the spout, okay? So you definitely wanna wash off all of this fruit and I did that already before we got started, okay? So the next thing, you can see here a couple of the bananas. The bananas are peeled and sliced. So I'm gonna have Wesley help me peel the bananas and Colton is gonna help me slice them up. And so when you slice up fruit, you need to use a knife. We wanna be very careful whenever you're using a knife and make sure you have your parents' permission. And we don't wanna play with that. We don't wanna to touch the top part. We only wanna to touch the handle, okay? So I'm gonna help Colton make sure we stay safe and protected while we're doing this. All right, so Wes, we're gonna take our first banana. Can you peel the banana for me? Here, want me to get it started? Sometimes if you need help getting it started, you can ask an adult. So you pull it and then pull it down. Good. Good job. Careful, you wanna keep it up here so it doesn't fall on the ground. Good job. All right, now Colton, we're gonna slice up the banana. So you wanna make them in little chunks like these ones, okay? Good job. So you wanna hold the fruit with one hand and hold the knife with the other. Good job. That's good to go slow. And it's good to have an adult around just to make sure you're staying safe. Good job. All right, so we cut up all of our bananas and we actually cut most of our strawberries. But I'm gonna show you how to cut strawberries if you wanted to learn. So one thing, you have to hold the fruit with your hands. You gotta cut off the green part, and then you can just slice it right in half. Just like that. So this one might be for older kids or for an adult to do. I, I just did the strawberries because it was a little bit safer for me to do as the adult. All right, so now all of our fruit is cut, and we have to make our skewers. So since we're making them in a pattern, I'm gonna make one of each and I'm gonna have you guys follow the pattern, okay? okay? All right, so for the, I'll have you do most of the stripes. So we do start with a red strawberry and then do a yellow banana and then you can do a red raspberry, a yellow or white banana, I guess, a strawberry, and then another banana, raspberry, and another banana. We'll just start with that and see how it goes, okay? So we have just a few and they alternate the different colors, okay? So I want you to try to copy that. Can you do that, Colton? Sure. All right, I'll have you get started and I'll show Wes his pattern, okay? So we'll do them together. Wanna do one together? We'll start with a strawberry. Mm 
Yeah, they are pretty slippery. You wanted to put the bananas on. Let's show them, Wes, here. You want to put the bananas on so the open circle part goes right, the skewer goes right through the middle of that circle, if you can, okay? Then a strawberry again. A banana. Then we did one raspberry. And then how many blueberries? Five. Five. So we'll count one, two, three, oops, good job. We've got three, four, and then one more. Five, good job. So we'll put these on the plate just like that, okay? That's great. Mushed. That's all right, it's a little bit mush, but that's okay. So we're gonna keep going until we make our full pattern. So we finished putting all of our fruit on the different skewers. We decided to make this pattern because it's 4th of July tomorrow, but you can make it in any type of pattern you want. Um, it's something fun to try with uh, kids or your cousins or brothers or sisters, anything like that. Um, today I am going to show you guys how to do a fun um, family um, game for 4th of July. Um, just a brief history of 4th of July. 4th of July celebrates um, America's independence from Great Britain. It was signed on July 4th, 1776, all right? So we're just going to create kind of a scavenger hunt slash bingo game for it, all right? So the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna need paper, more than one, okay? Um, scissors, um, marker, pencil, pen, whatever you have available at home, um, glue or um, tape, whichever one you have available, and crayons or color pencils, whichever one you have available at home. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to take um, this piece of paper. Um, as you see, at first is we call it landscape. This is what we call portrait, but I'm going to start off its landscape position, and then I'm going to fold that paper into half. And try to get it as even as possible if you can. Okay. And you're going to open it up. See, there's going to be a crease right there. And you're going to cut along that crease. So you're going to have two papers. Two halves, actually. So I have one half and I have another half, okay? So we're going to use this later to make our, our other family member a board also, all right? So now I have this half. Again, I'm starting off in the portrait position. And I'm going to fold it in half. So I like the half because that's easy for kids to do. So I'm going to fold it in half. Try to get it as even as possible. And I'm going to fold it in half again. All right? So now I'm going to go from this horizontal position to this position. All right? So if I open it up, I have four. So you can check it. I open it up. Oh, look, I have four parts now. All right? I'm going to close it up again. And I'm going to do the exact same thing in this position, all right? So I'm going to cut, fold this in half. Okay. And then now I have a little rectangle, really cute. And then I'm going to fold that rectangle in half also. Mm -hmm. It's a really little rectangle, and I'm going to open it up. And now I should have one, two, three, four parts up here, one, two, three, four parts on this side. And I'm going to take this and take my other sheet and I'm going to glue it onto it. Or take it, I'm going to take mine, okay, because I don't like glued, it's kind of sticky. So I'm going to put it on the corners of each side. Remember if you're using glue, all you need is a little dot of glue. And so now, 
see, I'm gonna go my game board. That's what it looks like now. And now what I'm gonna do is gonna write the word July on here. The letters. So I'm gonna use the letter J, the letter U, the letter L, and the letter Y. Okay? okay. My July on there. Alright, and now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to trace these creases so I can see like an actual bingo board going on here. So first I'm gonna go vertical. I'm gonna do three vertical lines. And then I'm gonna go horizontal. And I'm going to do three horizontal lines. So now as you see it looks like a little bingo board. Alright, and then I'm gonna put the fourth at the bottom. Because that's what we're talking about, July 4th. And I'm going to put USA. Because this was the United States of America's independence. And I'm going to put 1776. Because that is the year that we became independent from Great Britain. Oops, so here's mine. So now I can make it all nice and pretty. I can put like blue. I can color it blue. Alright, I can put hearts on it, I can put fireworks on it, I'm sure you guys are going to do a lot of fireworks that day, and I'm going to put some red, put some blue down here. So now you're going to make as many as these for each person in your family, okay? So I have one here, I made another one, I made another one, so we're going to say I have three people in my family, alright? And then each person will get a game board, alright? So now you will give your family members three minutes to find an object that starts with each letter of the word July. So for example, for my J, so you put your timer on, you can use mommy's phone, daddy's phone, auntie, grandma's phone, you click your timer on there and you start it, and each person in the family is gonna run around the house and find things to start with these letters. You can find the same thing, it is fine, okay? The point is to be the first person back at the table with your game board and with all the things that you have found on your game board. So we're going to start with J. So for me, I found jelly. And I'm going to write jelly here. All right. Or I'm going to draw a picture of a jelly. If you don't know how to spell, that's fine. Draw your pictures there. All right. I found jelly for J. I found uh, umbrella U. So I'm going to draw my picture of the umbrella here. So I'm not the best artist, but I'm going to try. All right. Umbrella, and then for the L, I found a line. Okay, so I'm going to draw a line there. So as you're finding these things, draw your pictures or write the word. And then for Y, I found yogurt. Okay. So I'm gonna draw me a little picture of the yogurt. I'm gonna write yogurt. All right, so let me put a little bit darker so you guys can see my picture, my word. All right, so so you guys need to decide before you start your timer if you want it going horizontally or sorry vertically, sorry or horizontally. All right, diagonally, whatever directions you guys want. So you can go diagonal. Vertical, horizontal, you guys have to decide that, all right? So mommy might say, oh no, let's do it vertically this time, all right? And you guys go up and down, all right? So I need one here, one here, one here, one here, all right? All righty, so you guys have a fun 4th of July, all right? And remember, be safe. Um, don't get too close to those sparklers, all right? Bye-bye. Hey guys, tomorrow is the 4th. This is Mrs. Egan from Sunbeam Elementary and I'm here today to show you how to make two different types of patriotic t-shirts that you can wear tomorrow to celebrate all of the festivities. 
I know that many things have been canceled, fireworks and parades, but we still have the opportunity to celebrate our country's freedom in a unique way. We're gonna get started in just a second with the help of two of my children. And I'm gonna go ahead and show you our supply table. As always, I really like to put some type of tablecloth down in order to protect whatever surface we're working on. And then it's always nice to do these type of things outside when we're doing anything with paint or with fabric dye because it just keeps our inside nice and clean and it gives us the opportunity to keep our clothes clean. Because we're doing this in two different ways, I'm going to have two different types of supplies. One is an acrylic paint, blue and red. You can also use puffy paint or you could use poster paint or you could also use fabric paint, just whatever you have. And then you're gonna need two spray bottles, one for each color with some warm water, about three quarters of the way filled. So I have a blue one for my blue and I have a clear one for my red. That's the first way. And then I'm gonna show you a second way that we can make shirts using tie dye. So I have blue and red, and then I also have little bottles for them to go in to disperse the color. If you're doing the traditional tie dye method, you are going to need some rubber bands and you are going to need t-shirts. And I actually was able to pick these t-shirts up for $2.99 for five t-shirts at Marks, and this is a child size eight. And we're just gonna go right ahead and get into our tie dyeing and our spray painting of our patriotic t-shirts. We're gonna get started with our spray paint method first. So take the acrylic red paint and you're gonna pour it into our clear container. That's good. Whoa! That's cool. And then what we're gonna Whoa. do is we're gonna shake it up. I'm gonna shake it up. We gotta cool. make sure that it is closed really tight. Come on, shake it up. Hey, I didn't get to shake it. Shake it up, shake up the blue. We already did the blue. Good job. Wow. And <laughs> now we're gonna lay out our t-shirts and get ready for our designs. We have two shirts laid out. Each of my children, one has blue, one has red, and then halfway through designing their shirts, they're gonna switch so that their shirts will be red, white, and blue. I have our spray bottles on a fine mist so that it's not a stream of paint coming out at once, but kind of a bunch of speckles or little spots of paint at once. And you may start making some designs. All right, and then what you need to do with your shirts is lay them out and you can just keep them right in the sunshine until they dry and they are ready to wear. Once you get your basic spots down on your shirt, then you can start adding some designs with the spray paint. So here's one of our shirts. And then what I can do is add the word you the letter U, S, A. And then something cool that my children were doing was having stars or hearts. So I think I'm gonna add a heart. Awesome. The second way that we're gonna make a patriotic shirt is by doing classic tie-dye but just in a small amount. So I have a little bottle here and I used this funnel to fill it up with some hot water. And I'm going to mix our blue dye into our blue container and make sure that it dissolves. The next thing you're gonna to wanna to do after dissolving your dye is to roll up 
your t-shirt or whatever you are tie-dyeing and get your rubber bands ready. You're going to place rubber bands at a couple different spots on the shirt in order to create the white part of the shirt that is not going to get dyed. And I'm going to show you that in just one second. I have my shirt all rubber banded up into sections. And what I'm going to do is start with our red. I put our red in as close to a color container as I could find that was red. This is pink. You can tell that it's red. And I'm just going to go right ahead and pour it right over the top. And you can take it and sort of twist it around. And because we're doing it on a tablecloth, it makes it perfect. So you can just roll it around and get the rest of all the drips on the tablecloth into our shirt. It's okay if there are white spots. That's kind of the point because it's the 4th of July. So you want it to be red white and blue. So I'm not going to make it completely red. I'm going to leave some white blotches and then I'm going to take my blue and I'm going to do the top and when we unravel this it will kind of look like a flag with the blue in the corner and the red on the bottom, the red and the white. So I'm going to do that same thing, roll the blue into all our extra blue on the tablecloth. When you take the rubber bands out and rinse it with cold water, you get a super cool tie-dye red, white, and blue design. I hope you guys have a great fourth. Be safe and celebrate with those you love. Bye guys. Hi, and happy early 4th of July. My name is Miss Marshall, and I'm a physical therapist from the Cleveland Metropolitan School District. This week, we're celebrating 4th of July and different activities you can do at home. Um, so this year, your 4th of July is probably gonna look a little different, and I figured I could show you how to do a fun uh, exercise parade, either at home or in the park. Um, so when doing or participating in a parade, it's really important to march. So throughout this whole thing, we're gonna be marching. We're gonna practice marching. So we're gonna march for eight counts. So you're gonna move your opposite hand with your opposite foot and raise it up. And we're gonna go back and forth eight times. So let's count it out. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So while we're doing this parade, we're gonna be looking for different red and blue stars throughout the parade. At the back of each star, there's gonna be a different activity that we're gonna do an exercise. And I'm gonna show you what those exercises look like and then we'll participate with them. So we gotta make sure we collect all eight stars at the end of the parade. Are you guys ready? Okay, here we go. Oh, I think I see my first one. Let's see what this one says. This one says star jump. So we're gonna do four star jumps. So I'm gonna show you how to do a star jump. It's kind of like a jumping jack, but you're going to get low to the ground like this, and you're going to kind of put your hands together, and then you're going to jump up out wide with your feet and your arms. So it's going to look like this. Back down. We're going to do four of those in a row. This is a big jump, so get nice and low. Ready, set, go. One, two, three, four. Great job! So that was the first one. We did four star jumps. So let's keep marching to see where our next star is. Okay, I see a couple stars here coming up. Okay, the next one is a red star. This one are side jumps. So I'm actually gonna put this star down here and we're gonna jump side to side over the red star. We're gonna do this 10 times. We'll put all those stars down. Okay, here we go. So it's just a little side jump back and forth like that. 10 times, are you guys ready? Here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, we finished the first two activities. So we're gonna keep going on our parade and marching down. Let's see. Make sure I don't pass any. I see a blue one. This one are lunges. So we're gonna do four 
lunges, two on each side. So I'm gonna show you what those look like. So when doing a lunge, you're gonna wanna step one foot forward. You're gonna wanna make sure your knees don't go past your toes. And then you're gonna bend down like this. And then you're gonna step back. So that's one. So let's start off, we're gonna do four of these. So one, other foot, two, three, four. Okay, so I think we have how many stars with us? We've done three so far, so let's keep marching. So we'll go right, left, right, left. Another star. This one are mountain climbers. Now this one we're actually gonna get on the ground for. And we're gonna do uh, 10 mountain climbers, so it looks like this. You're kinda getting in a push-up position. Hands nice and wide. You want your back nice and straight. And then you're gonna pull your knee in and out. In and out. Now if you really wanna challenge, you can run it. Or you can do them nice and slow. So we're gonna do 10 of those. Are you guys ready? Here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, let's keep marching, see if we find any more stars. Make sure to keep those knees nice and high, moving those arms back and forth. Oh, there's another one. Let's see what this one says. These are squat jumps, so they kind of look a little bit like the star jumps we have. But you're just going to get low, nice and wide in the squat, and then you're just going to jump up. And we're going to do five of those. So we're going to get down low and jump. Okay, ready? Let's count them out. One, two, three, four, five. Great job! Okay, let's keep marching. Make sure I don't pass any. Oh, there's one over here. Okay, and the next one is gonna be balance on one foot. So we practice this a lot, but it's really important to keep working on your balance. So you're gonna practice staying on one foot and keep your arms at your hips, out wide, and then you're gonna raise one foot and try to keep it for 10 seconds. Let's see, I'm gonna start with this leg. And sometimes too, like, if you spot something on the floor to help keep your balance, that's helpful too. So let's raise one foot up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, let's switch to the other foot. Here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Are you guys able to keep your balance on both feet? That's a tricky one. Okay, let's keep marching. Bringing those arms, lifting those knees. Here's another one. Okay, this one's called cross crawls. So it's kind of working on balance too. I'm gonna show you what it looks like. So you're gonna raise one knee up and then touch your hand to that knee and then bring it back. So we're gonna do five on each side, so a total of 10. So we're gonna keep our arms nice and high and we're gonna go one, two, three, four, Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Good job. Okay, let's keep our parade moving. Gotta make sure we lift those knees and those arms up, marching down. I found a red star. Let's see what this one says. This one's jumping jack. Okay, so now we're gonna do ten jumping jacks. So you're gonna bring your feet out wide and your arms up together and then you're gonna close your feet and bring your arms down at your side. Okay, you guys ready? We're gonna do 10 of those. Here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Great job! I think we're all done with all eight activities. Let's count them. We have one, two, three, four, five, and eight. Thank you guys so much for joining me and completing this parade. I hope you guys have a wonderful 4th of July with your friends and family. Thanks. Hello CMSD scholars and families. Happy 4th of July. My name is Mrs. Herring and I teach preschool and kindergarten at Tremont Montessori. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make a 4th of July firework painting. 
First thing I'm gonna go over with you is the supply list. All these supplies can be found at the Dollar Tree or some of them you might even have laying around at home. So let's get started. First thing you're gonna need is some type of paper, either white paper, notebook paper, or construction paper, any of that's gonna work just fine. Second thing you're gonna need is some type of paint, either washable, tempura, or acrylic. Just keep in mind the acrylic is not um, machine washable. The next thing you're gonna need is some type of container or paper plate to hold the paint. You're gonna need straws that are able to bend. Make sure they have the little bend in them. Or if you're using the second option, you can go ahead and just use a paper towel tube or a toilet paper tube. So either straws or the tube. And then if you're using the straws, you will need some tape to fasten it. I'm using painter's tape, but you can really use any tape that you have laying around. So the first one I'm gonna show you is the straw painting. So you're gonna to need to get about six or seven straws together in a bundle. Three, four, five, six, seven. I'm gonna make sure the bend is at the top for all of the straws. So make sure that the little line is at the top. Then I'm gonna start by taping them together in a bundle. So they're straight up and down and I'm putting the tape around the middle. Step number two, I'm going to start pulling these out and bending the straws outwards. This is going to give me oops, the shape of the firework. So this is going to give me the shape of the firework. Step number two, you're going to need to put paint on the plate. I'm going to be using red, white, and blue because those are the colors that we normally associate with 4th of July, but you can use whatever colors that you want or that you have at home. I'm starting with a small amount of each because you can always add more later if you need it. The next thing you're going to do is you're going to carefully dip the flat side of each straw into the paint. You can do one color at a time or you can mix the colors together like I did here. So I'm dipping the flat part of the straw into the paint. So it looks like this. And then I'm gonna carefully stamp it one time onto the paper. Now you might have to halt by pushing each arm of the straw onto the paper so it touches and leaves the paint there. And when I take it away, it looks like a firework. Now you can play with the different colors. You can mix them together. You can keep them separate if you want to keep all the colors separated. Whatever you want to do. And if you want your fireworks to look wild, like they're moving, you can actually move the stamp around a little bit. Instead of keeping it flat, you can move it around a little bit. Whatever look you want. So there's no wrong way to do it. Whatever makes you happy. And then add as many fireworks as you want and your painting is complete. Hang it up somewhere safe to dry. That's option number one. Option number two is going to be using the toilet paper tube. So we're gonna keep this paint on the plate and we're just gonna switch out what we're using as the stamper. So for this option, like I said, they use toilet paper tube or paper towel roll, whatever you have at home is gonna be fine. And you're gonna need a pair of scissors. So if you are a child, you might need to ask an adult um, or an older sibling for help with this part. Please be careful with the scissors. So you're going to hold the toilet paper tube in one hand and you're going to make a or I'm sorry, vertical cut up and down on the toilet paper tube. Don't go all the way to the top though because we need to save some space up there for the handle to hold on to. So I'd say go about halfway up and stop. So I didn't go all the way to the top. 
I'm gonna continue making those vertical cuts all the way around the tube. So I'm stopping halfway at each cut. I'm not going to the top. The next step, you're gonna fold each cut upwards and this is going to make the shape of the firework. So now that I have each um, section folded up, I have my shape of my firework. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get another piece of paper ready. And I'm going to repeat the same process that I did with the straws. So I'm going to dip the flat part into the paint. This time I'm going to mix the colors together and see how that turns out. making sure that I have all of the different little arms coated in paint. Then I'm gonna stamp it onto the paper like we did with the straw. And when I lift it up, it looks like a pure. So your finished product can look like this. And if you have any dry glitter laying around, you can always put some glitter onto the paint while it's wet for a little extra um, excitement. So that is two different ways that you can make 4th of July firework paintings. One, we use straws. The other way, we used a used empty paper towel or toilet paper tube. The choice is yours. I hope you enjoy. Have a happy 4th of July and stay safe. Bye. Hi everyone, I'm Mrs. Lasley and I'm an intervention specialist at Riverside School and this is my daughter Elle. and we want to wish you a happy 4th of July weekend. Today's episode we are going to show you how to make a yummy dessert but I have to give a shout out to one of my students who actually showed me how to make this dessert on our last Zoom episode of the school year. His name is Miss Ayel. So great job Miss Ayel, I want to, want to show him your yummy dessert. Okay, so this dessert requires a couple steps. So the first thing that you have to do is you need to make sure that you have an adult present in your kitchen because you are going to be using the oven today. And remember, if you're using the oven, you have to be very careful because you could burn yourself. Another thing that you have to do is make sure you wash your hands. We, for time's sake, we already washed our hands. Um, so make sure you wash your hands before you begin anything. So the first step you need to do is you need to preheat, have your parents preheat your oven to 350 degrees. So Elle is going to do that now. And did you notice that she checked to make sure that there was nothing in the oven before she preheated the oven? So you always check the oven first before you turn it on. Just make sure you don't burn anything, okay? So I am going to be out of this video for most much of the video today and Elle is going to show you how to do it. But you'll hear me talking and helping her through the steps. Okay, you ready Elle? Yes, I am. Okay, so the first thing that she needs is brownie mix. It could be any brownie mix. So she's going to open that up. And to help her a little bit, she's going to need a pair of scissors to open the plastic. You're going to cut that open over the bowl to make sure that you don't get any of that powder on the flour on the um, counter. Okay, and I'm going to take her garbage. The next thing that she needs is a liquid measuring cup. Okay, this is what a liquid measuring cup. Liquid means watery, something that is that feels like water. So you use um, water, you use liquid measuring cup when you measure water or oils, things like that. So she needs one third cup water. Okay, I think that's a little bit too much. I think you put one and one third cup. You, she just needs one third. So make sure that you read the signs. You don't want one and one third. You just need one third cup. That's a common mistake um, a lot of people do sometimes. That looks right. And she's gonna pour that in the mixture. 
good. And then she's gonna take her vegetable oil and she's gonna do the same thing. She needs one third cup vegetable oil. I'll hold it for her. One third is right there. Little line. That's good. And that's what one third cup looks like. We're gonna pour that in. And then the last step for this section is one egg. So she's gonna crack it on the counter. Then she's going to open that up. Good. She's gonna throw the shell away and then she's gonna wash her hands. Anytime you crack open an egg, make sure you wash your hands. While she's washing her hands, you're going to take a spoon and you are going to stir this. Okay. And the recipe says about 40 times. Um, you could do, you could count the 40 times or you could just make sure that it looks like, kind of like, like, looks like chocolate pudding when you're done with it. So it's about 40 times. Okay, now I'm gonna show you what that looks like. Just make sure that the powder is all mixed up. And that's what it looks like. Cake batter it looks like. And we're gonna put this to the side. The next thing that you guys are gonna do is you're gonna make the cheesecake filling. Okay, to do that, you need one package of cream cheese. Cream cheese. So she's gonna open that. While she's doing that, you are also going to need sugar and you're going to need one third cup sugar so this is a measuring cup that's at one third and make sure when you measure it you measure it all the way to the top so it's level to the top just like that and you're going to pour that in okay, i'm going to get some of that out of the way and then the last step is you're going to crack one egg She's gonna throw that away. She's gonna wash her hands while she's washing her hands. You are now going to mix this until it's smooth. So it's gonna be a little bit noisy. move this out of the way and I'm going to show you what this looks like and it's going to look like that so now you have two sections you have the chocolate brownie part and then you have the cheesecake part so the final step that one of the final steps you're going to do is you're going to get a cupcake pan holder and you're going to fill it with cupcake holders and we've already done that to save on time Okay, you're going to take a teaspoon of cheesecake filling and you are going to put it in each one of the cupcake pan Okay, it's easiest to do it this way. Um, and then you might have to use your finger to get some of the mixture off of the spoon just like that. And while I'm doing this, Ella is going to take a spoon. And what we've noticed is it's easier to use a ladle to do this, to scoop it and to pour it in. So she's gonna use a ladle and she's going to then ladle in about halfway. Put that down. She's gonna um, ladle in chocolate mixture onto, into the uh, cupcake pan too. I'm gonna do the cheesecake filling and she's gonna do the chocolate filling right on top of it. And about halfway up. It's it's okay if the cheesecake filling shows. It's okay. And it's going to look like that. So you can see some of the cheesecake filling and then most of it is the chocolate filling. And you're going to put that in the oven and set the timer for 25 minutes. So I'm going to open the door. I'm going to slide it in. We're going to set the timer for 25 minutes. Start that. 
Now, we already made some cupcakes ahead of time, so when they're done, they start to look like that. Okay, kind of looks like marble, okay? So the last step that you have to do is you need to put frosting on. Now, since it's the 4th of July, we picked white frosting and we are going to decorate it with sprinkles. We're gonna decorate it with blue and red sprinkles, okay, on top. So I'm gonna give Elle a butter knife and I'm gonna take a butter knife. We're gonna open the jar of white frosting. And you are just going to spread it right on top. Spread it however you want. Put as much as you want on. Okay. And we're gonna just decorate four for now. Put those on. A whole bunch. Put it on and then you just smooth it out. Some people like to um, let the cupcake show through. Some people like to cover the whole thing. So I like to cover the whole thing, okay? And then when you're done with that, we're done with that, yeah. okay? You're gonna take your sprinkles. We're gonna put glue on first, okay? And you're just going to lightly sprinkle them over. We have a fly in the kitchen. Awesome. And then she's gonna close that one up and she's gonna find the red ones. It's okay, let's it over. There you go. They were stuck on the top. A little bit more. Oh, these are stuck a little bit on the top. Okay. I like lots of sprinkles on mine. Okay, so you have your red, white, and blue chocolate cheesecake brownie cupcakes. L you know is the taste tester. Try one, open that up and give it a try. What do you think? It's good. It's just good? It's perfect. It's perfect, it's yummy. And you know my students know me, I love chocolate, so I'm in trouble today. So I hope you have a great holiday weekend. Be safe, I miss you, and I will see you next week. Bye.